Let's face it, as teachers, planning lessons can be a giant headache sometimes. It's time consuming and can often be quite complex if you have a lot of different classes you need to plan for. If you don't have a good system for organizing your lessons, it can get overwhelming very quickly. This is where Notion comes in. Unlike other online planners, Notion is a superior platform for lesson planning, offering an all-in-one workspace with customizable templates, integrated task management, and a flexible interface, making it easier and more efficient for teachers to organize, track, and adapt their lessons. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Notion to create your own lesson planner that's not just functional, but really easy to use. We'll go through step-by-step step showing you how to set up your own planner that you can then adjust to your own teaching style. If you'd like to skip ahead and download a free version of this lesson planner, then you can click the link in the description below. But if you want to learn the building blocks and basics of creating your own lesson planner in Notion, then stick around and enjoy this video. Okay, the first thing we'll do is to create a new page and we'll title it Lesson Planner. To make everything a little easier to work with, we'll change the page to full screen as well. We're gonna create our first database by using the slash command and typing in the word data, and then just selecting inline database. This database will be used for all of our lessons. We'll give this database the title lessons and we'll remove the tag property just to clean it up a bit. From here, we're going to add our first property, which will be the date property. This will be used to tell us on what day our lessons will be taught. The next property we will add is a select property, and this will be used to distinguish between the different types of lessons. So for example, we can add in a project assignment and lessons tag, but you can also add in anything you want, like homework events, or even tests and quizzes. The next property we will add will be a status property, and this will help tell us what lessons we have prepared materials for and what lessons uh, we have finished teaching. We'll also add one more status property under the completed section, and we will title this archive. Archiving lessons will help us remove lessons from our workspace, but not delete them entirely. So this can be really helpful if we have a giant number of lessons, but still want to keep them for later use while keeping our workspace uh, clean and organized. Let's clean up uh, this database just a bit by deleting some of the blank entries, and then we'll give our first lesson a title. Also, let's give it a date and a lesson type. We're now going to format the database a little bit by changing the title of this database view to all. And to make it a little more aesthetic as well, we can add in uh, a custom icon. To allow lessons to be properly archived, we're going to add in a custom filter. So we're gonna go to filter and click on status. We're then going to select the status to is not and then select archive. This means on our database view, we will only show lessons that do not have the status archive. We will then duplicate this view, title it archive and give it a new icon. Then we will change the filter to only show lessons that have the status property archive. Great, so now when we select a lesson and change its status property to archive, it will properly filter between these two database views, sending a lesson to the archive view and then back to the all lessons view if we remove the archive status property. So again, whenever you are done teaching a lesson, you can select archive and remove the lesson from the workspace without actually deleting any lesson material. If you ever want to use the lesson again, just find the lesson and change the status property. The next thing we're going to do is add a new database for lesson units. This will allow us to organize lessons much more easily by grouping lessons together into unit folders. We'll do the same thing as we did earlier by using the slash command to create a new inline database and we'll title this database uh, lesson units. We'll also remove the tag property as well. To properly connect the lessons database and the lesson units database, we're going to add our relation property. So click on relation and then select the lessons database. Make sure to click the little tab that says show on lessons. Uh, this way it will create a two-way communication between the two databases. We'll also change the icon to make it a little prettier. And then let's clean up the database just a little bit by deleting the blank entries and we'll give our first lesson unit a title. Now you can see that when we select a lesson from the lesson relation property that it shows up on both the lesson and the lesson unit database. 
This will allow us to tag and group lessons together to a specific unit, allowing us to organize and find lessons much more easily. Okay, now for the fun part to make everything look a little bit more aesthetic. Uh, we're going to move the lessons database down a bit and give each database its own title and divider. Go into the database layout settings and deselect database title, vertical lines, and wrap all columns. I find doing this makes the database look a little cleaner and just a little more visually appealing. We're now going to do some notion magic and have the lesson unit pages properly show the lessons that are tagged to that unit. So to do this, we're going to go over to the lessons database and click on the six dots on the left, and we're going to click on copy link, open up the lesson unit page, and then click on create a template, then click on full screen. So it's a little easier to work with and give our new lesson unit template a title. We'll call it new unit and then give it its own custom icon. Okay, after that, go to the page itself and paste the database that we copied earlier by hitting Control V and selecting Create Linked View of the Database. This is how we can create a linked view of all of our lessons inside this lesson unit page. To have this database only show lessons that are tagged to this unit, go to Add Filter, click on Lesson Unit, and select New Unit. This way, whenever we create a new unit, the lessons database within that page will only show lessons that are tagged to that new unit. Then we can remove the lesson unit property from view since it's a little redundant. Then we can change the property sizes just to make it look a little more clean. Great, that's all we have to do to create our unit template. Let's go back to the main page and then apply our new unit template to unit one that we created earlier. We can now see that our lesson one will show up on this page because we tagged this lesson to this unit a little earlier in this tutorial. For this demonstration, let's just add two more lesson units and we'll title them English and Science. We can also then apply this new unit template to each of them as well. Now, similar to the unit template, we can also do the same by creating a unique lesson template. We do this the same way by clicking on lesson and clicking on create new template. We can call this template new lesson and then give it a custom icon. If you wanted, you could now add some kind of information to your lesson template page. Uh, this could be some kind of standard lesson scaffold or just additional information or resources that you might need to use for any general lesson. But for this demonstration, we're just going to leave it blank. Okay, to have these templates applied to both of these databases automatically, uh, we're gonna go over to the database and click on the top right blue arrow. Find our new template and select set as default. This way, whenever we create a new lesson unit or a new lesson, the template is applied automatically. Let's now add a few more example lessons. Here we'll add an English lesson, and you can see now by the book icon that appears next to the title that the template has been applied automatically. Let's give it a date, a tag, and then we'll also select the lesson unit. We'll repeat this exact same process for a science project this time. We'll give it an extended date by selecting an end date, and then we'll change the type to project. Again, we'll select the science lesson unit. Now you can see when we click on our English unit, we can see our English lesson. And then when we click on science unit, we can see our science project there as well. This way of connecting lessons to lesson units using a relation property lets you easily group lessons together and stay much more organized. If you teach many different classes and subjects, this is a really easy way to find material quickly without getting overwhelmed. Uh, in a way, this kind of acts as a standard folder system uh, with the added benefit that Notion gives with how pages and databases can be linked with each other. Let's now do one last thing to this lessons database. We're going to come over to sort and click sort by date. This will have the lessons that we need to teach first show up at the top of the database. We can also do the same to the archive view as well. You can now see when we change the dates that they will sort automatically. All right. Let's now add a calendar view for our lessons. To do this, we're going to go to our lessons database and click on copy link, kind of like we did earlier. We'll add in a new title uh, called calendar and then copy the link below. 
Then go to layout and then select the calendar view. You can now see that all of the lessons that we added earlier will show up on this calendar. To add a little more information to our calendar, let's go over to properties and we'll select type and status. Now we can see these properties on the calendar. I find the calendar view is one of the best ways to organize lessons over a long period of time, or even to plan out a whole curriculum. You can just drag and drop lessons onto the calendar. If you wish, you can duplicate them easily and just have a very good visual overview of when you should be teaching lessons. If you were ever finished with a lesson, uh, we can right click a lesson, select the status property and change the status of this lesson to either done or archive. If we change it to archive, you'll see that it is removed from the calendar. One of the last things uh, we'll do is come over to the lesson unit database here, and we're going to change the view to gallery mode. Uh, this way, the lesson units will look more like folders. And I find this is a lot more just visually appealing. We can then come into the individual lesson units and give them each a custom cover. Now we can distinguish between the lesson units a little more easily. To have the page cover show up properly on the gallery view, uh, we can come over to the property and change the card preview to page cover. Then we give all of our lesson units a custom cover and change the icons to match. And there you have it. Our Notion lesson planner is just about done. We have a database for lessons with date properties, types, and statuses. We have these lessons linked up to lesson units to easily group lessons together. And then we have a nice calendar view to give us a more bird's eye view of our lesson curriculum. The calendar also allows us to drag and drop lessons, allowing us to more efficiently manage our lesson planning. After years of teaching and lesson planning, I find having this combination of spreadsheet, calendar, along with the lesson unit folders uh, to be a really efficient and headache-free way of managing hundreds of lessons in a year. Along with the archive system, you can track and save all of your lesson resources while still keeping everything clean and easy to look at. If you would like to download a free copy of the template I made in this video, uh, go and click on the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video or have any questions about using Notion alongside teaching, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to help fellow educators use Notion to improve their teaching. Uh, so thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.